All right, let's talk about dynamite here. I'm going to go through this quick, then we can talk more about any specific things that Mike wants to discuss. This was a weak show coming off the debut of CM Punk. And I'm going to talk more about that after I go over everything, because there's a, there's a point I want to make about this and all out. But first off, Orange Cassidy beat Matt Hardy. The match, literally the first thing after the debut of CM Punk on Rampage was comedy. And the comedy's fun, and their audience likes the comedy, but to me... You might be tuning in for the first time, and the first thing you see is slow motion kicks. I would not have done this in this segment. I would have opened this show with a hot match, boom, Lucha Brothers, whatever. I didn't think this was a a uh, good opener coming off the Punk deal. It ended up being a good match, although Orange Cassidy did uh, do a head cross right on a poor Matt Hardy's face, and and his face just exploded with blood everywhere. And he won with the hands in the pockets cradle. Jericho and MJF did a segment, which uh, is leading to a match at All Out, where Chris Jericho has put his career on the line. They are doing one more match. If Jericho loses, he will never wrestle in AEW again. He'll do commentary. He said he'll do Rampage, maybe even Dynamite, but I will never wrestle again. MJF gave him the match because tapping out Jericho is cool, but ending Chris Jericho would be legendary. So they will be wrestling on All Out. Lucha Brothers beat Varsity Blondes to uh, go on in the tournament. Match was, it was all right. There were a couple of of spots that were a little uh, not the greatest. Although, we'll talk about another match later where we took that up to a 10. But the uh, Penton Phoenix won, so they will be facing the Jurassic Express on Friday's show. Jamie Hayter and Red Velvet. Holy smokes. Red Velvet is green. It's just a fact. I'm not burying her, but she's green. And I, I had people arguing with me that she was not green because she'd had some good matches in the past. But I'm telling you, she's green, okay? And they botched a spot. And once they botched the spot, like her confidence was gone. And they botched one spot after another. And the match fell off a cliff. And finally, Jamie Hayter just grabs her and gives her a choke breaker and lariats her and pins her. Holy smokes, this match. We had a CM Punk promo where he came out and put over Darby Allen, put over all of the young stars, says he needs to prove that he can still go by taking on Darby Allen. Said Darby would have been my, my favorite wrestler when I was 15 years old. Fans did a yes chant, and he told them, you've got to be patient. So it, this also is no secret that Brian Danielson is on his way to AEW. Miro called out Eddie Kingston. We had Moxley, Kingston, and Darby versus the Wingmen. Match was fun, but I was watching going, the Wingmen. Let's get like a, we need a marquee match here on this show. And it was a fun match, as I noted, and uh, Darby Allen got the big win with the coffin drop. But then Daniel Garcia comes out, he just beats up Darby Allen. And I know Darby's going to get his win back, but bro, Darby Allen versus CM Punk, I would not have laid out Darby Allen on this particular show right here. I would be keeping uh, Darby Allen as strong as humanly possible leading into this match with, with CM Punk. We have uh, Dax Harwood doing a promo saying that Cash Wheeler has nerve damage. They're teasing it is the end of Cash Wheeler's career, but he's going to do one more match. And it will be FTR versus Santana Ortiz next week here on this show. Best thing on the show, a Kenny Omega promo with Don Callis and Cutler and Nakazawa where Christian came out and he went back and forth. With Don-, Don Callis is like, he's the greatest. A despicable, carny, I can't even say the rest, a horrible person, but he's great at this job. And he cut a promo. It did a lot of, of teases about uh, Christian being second best as compared to Edge. And according to Gangrel, I am not making this up, Gangrel claims that he was supposed to be in this segment but then after they did the brood stuff on on uh, SmackDown and SummerSlam, it was like, ah, it'd be too much. So they canceled his appearance. 
That's what he said. John Moxley announced that he will be facing Kojima coming up at All Out. He put over Kojima big, but promised to publicly execute him. We had a, a segment straight out of Raw. QT Marshall, Nick Camarado, and Aaron Solo versus Billy Gunn, Austin Gunn, and Colton Gunn. Uh, Paul White's doing commentary. It's Paul White and QT at the pay-per-view. QT is distracted by Paul White on commentary, and QT is pinned. I guess we all know what's going to happen, but again, I don't like WWE booking on my on my AEW shows. If you do, that's cool. I see too much of it. If you're one of those fans that doesn't watch Raw, this probably doesn't bother you at all. I watch Raw, so it bothers me. Dan Lambert... He is now the the manager of Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. This guy is out of this world. I can't even do justice to his promo, so I'm not gonna. But it was it was fantastic. And then we had uh, Malachi Black beating Brock Anderson. Y'all knew it was gonna happen. It happened exactly as you would think. Afterwards, Arn Anderson got in the ring, and uh, I thought it was very clever what they did. Arn Anderson squares off with with Malachi Black. Black goes for his finish, and Arn blocks it. The fans are like, oh! And so this despicable Malachi Black, he should be managed by Don Callis, a despicable duo. He boots Arn Anderson in the nuts, and then he kicks him and pin... Or he didn't pin him, but he kicked him and left him for dead. And uh, got a lot of heat, which is good because people were not booing Malachi Black. So I thought it was clever the way that they did this. So anyway, that was the uh, that was a show. Uh, Mike, your thoughts, and then I'll uh, go into a couple details. Yeah, you can keep Malachi Black as far away from that Manitoba moose merchant as possible. He absolutely needs no one. He is fine just coming out there and killing people on his own. It's fantastic. That worked great. Not really a whole lot to add because it's pretty much what everybody has said. It is a it was a show where I think they wanted to take a little bit of air. Yes, CM Punk was going to be there, but you still got two weeks to lead into Labor Day. So and a lot of big shows coming up and a lot of things going on. So I think, yeah, they did want to kind of deflate the balloon a little bit. But I think maybe match quality wise, especially with 2.0 being out of that match. And that's what put the wingmen in. And I think. If that match would have been 2.0 and Garcia against them, would it have been a little bit different? Would it have been laid out different? You know, again, I, I don't know. Probably it still would have ended with Darby getting choked out if they wanted to do a singles match leading into, but whatever. Again, again, that doesn't really matter. Bottom line is, is whatever the match has lacked, the interviews made up for, like Dan Lambert, like, I mean, Malachi Black's little one in the opening. I mean, they everything they needed to do, Jericho and MJF, all of their big stuff moved forward and came across well. And, yeah, the match quality, uh, whatever. Okay, fine. It wasn't the greatest show in the world, but all the most important stuff moved forward. I don't think it insulted anybody. I, I don't think there's a, a fear of people not coming back next week and it drops to 750,000 people. I don't think we're going to see the show plummeting off a cliff when we get the ratings that, you know, from the beginning to the end. It just uh, people tuned out because it was so bad of a show. I don't think any of that at all. And I think a little bit probably is getting too much is being made of the fact that it was a a kind of mediocre show, I guess, whatever, who cares? It's just, it wasn't a bad show at all, but you know, I guess it was something for everybody to talk about. And, you know, cause everybody fantasy booked, I guess this show with punk and how everybody was going to feel about, it. and you're hearing a lot of this wouldn't, you know, what, what I was going to do, I would have did this. I would have did that. Bottom line is it was still a good show. Again, match quality wise aside, it was a good show that moved everything forward. So nothing to really complain about here. Is it check in the mail or something? It wasn't a horrible show. It wasn't a bad show, but it was a weak show. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.